The framework of this car is going to be clamped in a special fixture. This holds the steel assembly firmly in place while it's spot welded together. On this large industrial lathe, we're turning an extremely heavy component. Here, the component is firmly held or restrained between the tailstock and the chuck. Let's see how well this component is restrained. It's a good job the lathe wasn't turning at speed. And what about this, drilling sheet metal? Another component insufficiently restrained. Apart from being extremely dangerous, this lack of restraint can result in defective work. A grind wheel revolves at very high speed. A component that isn't restrained in this sort of situation is liable to shoot out from under the wheel. It could even cause the wheel to shatter. The restraint looks sufficient here. But no, and this time we've damaged the cutting tool. To find out how to restrain work effectively, we need to start with a component that isn't restrained at all, like this one. It's free to move this way, this way, and this way. It's free to move in any of these three directions, each at right angles to the other. It's also free to turn about each of these three directions. Now we can prevent this component from moving down by putting it on a base plate. Any movement in this direction can be prevented by locating it between dowels. And the same goes for any movement in this direction. But there's still one direction in which it's free to move. Directions. We say the component is positively restrained. Here we've put that method of restraint into practice. The block is held between eight metal dowels fitted into the base plate and these prevent movement in two directions. Add the clamps and the block can't move in any direction. We've mounted this component on a milling machine. Let's take a cut. In this operation, the cutting forces acting on the component are relatively small. In fact, the forces are so small that the metal dowels aren't really necessary. So let's do away with them. Now, in two directions, we're relying on a frictional restraint obtained from clamping forces. When machining, clamps are often used for work holding purposes. In this case, it's a component on a drilling machine. By clamping the work to the table, we've prevented it from moving up and down. To prevent the work from spinning round, there's only the frictional restraint resulting from the clamping forces. Clamps can also be used to hold a component onto the faceplate of a lathe. When doing this, it's important to make sure that the faceplate is balanced. Can you think why? Here, we're setting up to drill a hole in the component. On the lathe, drills are usually mounted in the tailstock. 
First, we provide a start for the drill by using a centre drill. The work rotates at very high speed while the centre drill is fed into it. As the work rotates, it experiences a large force which tends to make it fly out from the centre. Any outward movement is prevented solely by frictional forces. Once it's been centre drilled, we can machine the hole using a twist drill. In this case, a large diameter drill. Now, as well as preventing the component from flying off the faceplate, the clamping forces must also provide sufficient frictional restraint to prevent the component from moving as a result of the cutting forces. Will clamps alone be sufficient to restrain the work in this instance? Well, that's damaged the work, but what's it done to the milling cutter? No cutter grinder would be able to correct this amount of damage. Here, the work is held securely. It's restrained by metal dowels or stops, as well as clamps. The stops provide positive restraint, where previously restraint was only frictional and insufficient. This component is held against an angle plate by a clamp. See what's happening? Again, the frictional restraint from the clamping forces is insufficient. Now we can prevent this from happening by resting the component on some metal packing pieces. and we clamp it in the same way as it was before. The metal packing pieces will provide positive restraint in the downward direction, the direction in which the drill feeds into the work. A vice is really a special type of clamp. This vice can be fixed in several different positions. By using it in this position, the work is positively restrained against the action of the cutting forces. The work in this shaper is restrained in a similar way. So far, we've only considered ways of holding rectangular components. What about round ones? One device that'll prevent it from rolling about is a V-block. In a V-block, a component is positively restrained from moving left and right. But it's still free to move backwards and forwards. We can prevent any movement in this direction by using a suitably designed clamp. 